Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining. Uh, we're going to get started in just another moment or two to give others time to log on. In the meantime, if any of you are new to Savvy and don't have an account yet, you can create yours by scanning the QR code and searching for the organization who referred you to Savvy. Feel free to make your account or hang out for another moment, and we are going to get started very soon. Once again, for those of you that are just joining, we're going to kick things off in about 30 seconds. Uh, so we're going to give everyone else just another second to log on, and then we will begin very shortly. Alrighty, well, it looks like we have a good number of people on and we have quite a bit to cover, so let's go ahead and get started. As always, a few housekeeping things before we begin. We'd like to let you know that this workshop is being recorded and informational materials will be available afterwards. So we will post this recording on our YouTube channel and we will send out the link to all of you in a follow-up email tomorrow. That follow-up email will also include uh, some other info to help you all get started with your Savvy account. If you have any questions, please feel free to put those in the Q&A. Uh, we'll have a break at the end to answer some of your questions out loud. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to throw those in the Q&A, and I'll do my best to answer them uh, coming up soon. Finally, if you need to use closed captions, I'm sending a link with instructions on how you can turn those on in the chat. So during today's session, we're going to start off with some quick introductions. Uh, and then we're going to spend most of our time talking about policy updates that are impacting borrowers, uh, kind of updates to existing programs, things you may have heard about in the news. Uh, so we'll talk about some one-time account adjustments, the save plan, and some updates to the PSLF program. We'll wrap up with some next steps and with an opportunity to answer your questions. So thanks so much for being here. My name is Job. Uh, I'm a senior associate here at Savvy. I'm really excited that you're all here so that I can help you learn about some student loan updates, learn about student loans in general, and hopefully learn about how Savvy can make it easier to manage your loans. In case you're new to Savvy, here's what you should know about us. First and foremost, we want you to know that you are our top priority. We are here to serve student loan borrowers, not student loans. So we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to support you as a borrower with managing your loans and making that process easier for you. We've also got insider info that helps us to help you. Our team has over two decades of expertise, and many of us are also student loan borrowers ourselves. Uh, me too. I am also included in that. So I know what it's like firsthand to have student loans. But this helps us to better serve you. Finally, saving has never been easier than it is with Savvy. 
Not only do we help you see what options are available, but we also help you enroll in these programs so that you can quickly and easily take advantage of any and all options. So SAVVY is your student loan benefit. We work by partnering with employers and membership organizations to offer our services as a benefit. We are your exclusive student loan benefit, helping you with any and all things student loans. Plus, we're available for you and your family members. So if you have a spouse, partner, or children with student loans, you can uh, invite them and they can sign up as well to benefit from Savvy Services. It's our goal that by working uh, with your employers or membership organizations that we can help all of you to find the best outcome for your loans. Alrighty, so jumping into those policy updates, starting off with one-time account adjustments. So with federal programs, there are quite a few requirements you need to meet to qualify. Historically, borrowers have struggled to meet those requirements. This has left them making payments that did not qualify towards forgiveness. In response to this, the Department of Education is conducting one-time account adjustments, which will give you credit for past periods that did not previously count. You'll be able to get credit for uh, certain forbearance and deferment periods, for payment periods, plus time before consolidating. The adjustments have already started and are going to be ongoing throughout fall of this year. The Department of Education expects that by the fall, uh, all of the adjustments will be complete. If, as these adjustments occur, uh, they find that you've been in repayment for more than 25 years, you could qualify for immediate forgiveness and your loan balance will be forgiven. As a result of the adjustments, the Department of Education estimates that borrowers are going to get three years closer to the finish line for forgiveness. And so far, they've already approved over $44 billion of debt relief as part of these account adjustments. So what specifically will you get credit for? The account adjustments are going to give you credit for essentially any past payment that you've made. You're going to get credit for any month where you were in repayment, even if you made that payment partial or late, if you had the wrong type of loan, or if you were on the wrong repayment plan. You'll also get credit for certain forbearance and deferment periods. So if you were in a forbearance for an extended amount of time, that being more than 12 consecutive months or more than 36 cumulative months, that time will be updated and marked as if you were in repayment. You'll also be able to get credit for deferment periods before 2013. So if you had any deferments before 2013, you can count those as well. The one exception to that being in-school deferments, which will still not count. Finally, all of these periods uh, will count even if they haven't before you consolidated. So if you had an ineligible loan type like a FELL loan, any payments or these periods before consolidating are still going to count. So you may have heard about the consolidation deadline. We did a lot of work to notify borrowers about this previously, because previously the deadline was April 30th, meaning you had to consolidate by then to be included in the adjustments. However, last week, the Department of Education announced an extension of this deadline. You now have until June 30th to make sure that you have the right type of loans. So these adjustments are going to be automatic, but only for people with the right type of loans. If you have direct loans already, you are good to go and you will be automatically included in the adjustments. If you have non-direct loans, uh, like commercially held Thel loans, Perkins, or Heal loans, you are required to consolidate uh, in order to qualify. So your loans have to be the, the correct type. If they are one of these listed types and you do not consolidate, you won't be included in the adjustments. So it's really important that if you require consolidation, you do so before June 30th. 
as this deadline gets closer, we'll be doing some more work like we did previously. We'll be notifying you if you require consolidation and walking you through that process. If you don't know what type of loans you have, you can add them to your savvy account. We will check to see what type they are, and if they require consolidation, we will notify you. So we are really encouraging everyone here to add your loans to your savvy account. We'll check for you if they're the right type, and then we'll email you and notify you if they require consolidation. Next update we've got for you is the SAVE plan. So this has been another newsworthy program. Uh, it's been in the news a lot lately. We've done a lot of discussion about it because it is so beneficial. So the SAVE plan is the newest income-driven repayment plan that was released last year. It's one of the four income-driven repayment plans that are offered. And for most borrowers, it's the most affordable repayment plan available. The SAVE plan uh, did replace repay. So if any of you are familiar with the income-driven plans, repay was the old plan available. Save has now taken its place, and anyone who was on repay was moved over to save. The save plan, uh, with all of its benefits, is available to anyone with direct loans. So as long as you have direct loans, you can enroll. If you have non-direct loans like FELL loans, you can consolidate to become eligible as well. It's important to note that the only people who do not qualify for the SAVE plan are Parent PLUS borrowers, since the rules state those can only be paid on the ICR plan. And just like with all of the other plans, SAVE is a PSLF eligible plan. So if you enroll in SAVE and make your payments, those will count towards PSLF. So what are the benefits of this plan? Perhaps the biggest benefit is that it has an interest subsidy. We've heard time and time again of borrowers enrolling and making their minimum payments, but their balance just keeps going up. In response to this, the Department of Education has created an interest subsidy on the SAVE plan. So as long as you're enrolled, making your minimum monthly payment, that does not cover all the interest that accrues for that month, the Department of Education covers the rest for you. For example, if you accrue $100 of interest per month and your payment is only $50, that leaves $50 in unpaid interest. In the past, that would have been added on to your balance, but now Ed is paying that leftover $50 for you so that your balances do not increase any further. They've also changed how payments are calculated. So the way your payment is calculated in general is done by subtracting a certain amount from your total income. The leftover amount is called discretionary income and that is what your payment is based on. The amount they subtract varies from plan to plan and under the save plan, they set aside a higher amount. This results in a lower discretionary income and a lower monthly payment. What it works out to is that no borrower who earns less than $15 an hour will have a student loan payment on save. Borrowers who earn more than $15 an hour will likely still see savings if they switch, since less of their income is included when calculating their payment. So because the save is an income driven or payment plan, that does mean there's a forgiveness option available. The SAVE plan uh, has a shorter timeline to forgiveness than other income-driven plans. So the way this works is that after you have enrolled and made payments for the required amount of time, whatever balance you still owe is completely forgiven. For the SAVE plan, there's a shorter amount of time you have to pay before you can get this forgiveness. So if your original principal balance was $12,000 or less, your monthly payment or excuse me, your forgiveness timeline is 10 years. After you paid for 10 years, if you still owe a balance, it's forgiven. As your original balance increases, so does your timeline to forgiveness. For each additional $1,000 borrowed, it adds a year to the timeline. So for example, if you borrowed $13,000, you have to pay for 11 years. 
If you borrowed $14,000, you pay for 12, so on and so forth. The maximum timeline to forgiveness under save is 20 years if you have only undergraduate loans or 25 years if you have any grad loans. So your loan balance of when you took it out will determine how long you have to pay for on save. But in general, if you have a lower loan balance, you could qualify for forgiveness sooner. And there's even more benefits coming soon. Starting in July, the final regulations for this program will take effect. If you have only undergraduate loans, your new payment will be only 5% of your discretionary income, which is down from the current 10%. Borrowers uh, who have only grad loans are going to stay at 10%. And if you have both grad and undergrad, you'll be between 5 and 10%. So essentially, any borrower with only, or excuse me, any borrower with undergrad loans will have more savings starting in July. The other great news is that uh, these recalculations of payments should be automatic, meaning that you should not need to reapply, and your payment will be automatically updated once the changes are implemented. And our last update that we've got for you are some updates to the PSLF program. So if you are familiar with PSLF, you may know that previously, Mohila, who is a federal loan servicer, was the manager of that program. All PSLF applications were submitted to Mohila, and when you enrolled in PSLF, you were transferred from your current servicer over to Mohila. Now, though, the Department of Education will manage that program internally. It will be available through studentaid.gov. And this means that this will allow PSLF to be eligible across all loan servicers. This means that no matter who you are with, whether you're with Ed Financial, Advantage, Nelnet, you can stay with that servicer and still enroll in PSLF. In the future, Student Aid will be the new manager Applications will be submitted to Student Aid instead of to Mohila, and they will be the ones to manage that program. In order to move the program over from Mohila to Student Aid, they are temporarily pausing the processing of PSLF forms. So this began on May 1st and will last through some time in July. During this time, they will not be making any updates uh, to accounts for PSLF purposes. So no processing of employment certification forms, no results being sent out. Essentially, everything is just on hold. As I said, um, everything is on hold and they're not processing anything. You can still apply, but they won't be sending out any notifications, any updates, anything until processing resumes later this summer. If any of you have already begun pursuing PSLF, your progress will be temporarily unavailable. You won't be able to see your progress in your Mohila account, but it will be available once the transition is complete on studentaid.gov. So what should you do? You can still apply for PSLF as normal. And we're really encouraging you to take advantage of SABI during this time. If you apply for PSLF during this time, the Department of Education is not uh, sending out any notices, meaning they're not even confirming that the forms were received. However, if you apply through SAVI, we are able to track the status of that application, and we can confirm that it was submitted while the Department of Ed cannot. So during this time, it's really beneficial to use SAVI because you'll be able to know exactly what the status of your form is and once processing resumes, applying earlier will put you at the top of the queue. So we recommend submitting your forms per usual so that you can get those results even sooner this summer. It's important to note that while no updates are happening during this time, payments are still due, meaning you'll still need to make your monthly payments to your loan servicer during this pause. Once the pause is over, uh, they will then update any payments, give you credit, and start processing forms again. In the event that you make your 120th payment during this pause, 
you'll need to continue paying. However, once the pause ends and they resume processing, you'll be refunded for any payments past 120. Alrighty, now let's get into a couple of frequently asked questions and a quick overview of how to use your Savvy account before we open it up for your questions. So first, how can I get my loan forgiven? There are two main programs that can benefit you and provide loan forgiveness. These are public service loan forgiveness and income-driven repayment plans. For public service loan forgiveness, this program forgives your remaining balance after you have worked in public service and made payments for a 10-year period. Specifically, you need to work in public service, have direct loans, and pay on an income-driven plan. Once you've made 120 payments that meet those the requirements, your entire remaining balance is forgiven. For income-driven forgiveness, your remaining balance is forgiven after you've enrolled into an income-driven plan and paid for the required amount of time. How long you have to pay for depends on a couple of factors like what plan you're on and your loan types. So if you're on the SAVE plan, you need to pay for 10 to 25 years. All other plans require you to pay for 20 or 25 years. So these are two great broad programs available to a lot of borrowers. Income driven or payment plans are available to every single student loan borrower who has federal loans and public service loan forgiveness is available for any borrower working in public service. To see your eligibility for these programs, you can use Savvy. We will see what your situation is, help see if you qualify for any of these programs and take any necessary steps to getting on track for forgiveness. What do I do if my payment is too high? Since payments did resume last year in October, uh, you now have to account for a new monthly expense. If your payment is too high and you are struggling to afford it, we highly encourage you to use our personalized repayment estimator. This will allow you to see other repayment options that are out there so that you can find any and all available uh, repayment plans. This ensures that you are getting the lowest possible payment and saving as much as possible. Typically, your best option is to enroll in an income-driven or payment plan. We recommend doing this because it will give you a low, more affordable payment that is based on your income and family size. Plus, payments made on an income-driven plan count towards forgiveness. Once you've entered your information in your Savvy account, we will show you your eligibility for income-driven or payment plans so that you can see all options available and lower that payment quickly and easily. Do I need to consolidate for the payment account adjustments? So not everyone is required to consolidate. You are only required to do so if you have commercially held Bell loans, Perkins loans, or HEAL loans. Those people are absolutely required to consolidate. If you have one of these other situations, it could be in your best interest to consolidate. So if you have Parent PLUS loans or FELL loans, you're not required to consolidate, but you should. This is because this will maximize the benefit for you and help you to count as many possible payments towards forgiveness. The other people who should consolidate are people who have loans from different time periods. This is because loans have individual payment counts, meaning that they would be forgiven at different times. But if you consolidate loans with different payment counts, they apply the higher one to your new total. So let's say you have a loan with 100 payments and a loan with 50 payments. Typically, those loans would be forgiven individually at separate times. But if you consolidated them together, your new loan would be credited with 100 payments and all your loans would be eligible for forgiveness at the same time. So commercially held Fell, Perkins, and Heal loans required to consolidate. Anyone with Fell, Perkins or loans from different times uh, should consolidate uh, to make the most of these benefits. How can I apply for programs through Savvy? So we've made this really easy to do. 
we collect all of the necessary information from you to see what you qualify for. After you've entered your information, our results page will show you what options are available. You'll be able to see what income-driven plans are out there, what your monthly payment could be, your timeline to forgiveness, and how much forgiveness you can get. Then, depending on your situation, we will direct you to create any necessary forms. So if you're switching to an income-driven plan, we will create and submit that form for you. If you're switching uh, and enrolling into PSLF, we'll create all the necessary forms and enroll you in PSLF as well. Can Savvy help me with my loans? Absolutely. So as I mentioned, once you've entered your information, we'll show you what options are available. So it's very easy to use your account on your own and see what's out there. We want to ensure we're doing everything we can to help you, though, so you can get personalized assistance from our student loan experts as a benefit of our Essential membership. If you are an Essential member, you'll be able to access one-on-one -on -one support from our student loan experts. They can help you with any student loan concern, whether it be discussing what options are available, resolving an issue with your loan servicer, uh, or helping you enroll in programs. We like to say that nothing is too big or too small, and we will do anything we can to make this process easier for you. Alrighty, so wrapping up with a couple of next steps, and then we will open it up for questions. We want to ensure that you have access to your Savvy accounts. If you are new and do not yet have an account with us, you can sign up by scanning this QR code you'll be able to search for your employer or membership organization, and you'll be redirected to their signup site. We have special signup links for each of our partners, so this is why we have you take this step. If you're not able to do this, uh, we can create an account for you and email you with some instructions on how you can do so. So either sign up now or check your email after the session. If you're a returning user, you can scan this QR code to sign back in or sign in anytime at buysavvy.com. So when you are using Savvy, there are three simple steps you'll complete. On step one, you'll start your application with us and enter your info to see what options are available. We're gonna run the numbers for you, find out what's out there and show them to you in step two. On step two, you will compare all of the plans available and choose the one that is most beneficial for you. Finally, on step three, we will submit the applications to enroll you in your selected plan. All you need to do is sit back and start saving. I mentioned the essential plan. Here at Savvy, we do have a few different membership levels. It is absolutely free to create your account, and there is no cost to seeing what options are available. We have a free do-it-yourself option where we will even provide you with instructions on enrolling in your selected plan. But if you want us to do the heavy lifting for you and you want to unlock more savvy features, you can enroll in the essential plan. This is really great because it unlocks features like digital application creation and submission. It lets us monitor everything moving forward to keep you on track, and it gives you access to personalized support from our student loan experts. This is great because it has a money back guarantee, meaning there's no risk to enrolling. This is uh, an annual membership, so it's not per month, it's per year, uh, and typically is no more than $70 per year. The other great news is that many organizations offer discounts on this. So we encourage you to click select a plan from your dashboard and see exactly how much this is for you. And remember, you can see what options are available before enrolling. So feel free to check out what's out there. Uh, and then if you would like our help enrolling in your selected programs, or if you need that personalized support from our student loan experts, you can enroll in the essential plan. If any of you are existing users, you can scan this QR code and sign into your account for a shortcut to this page. As always, if you need any help, we are always here. You can click contact support from any page of the Savvy website to be connected with resources. We have our help center, which includes articles on common student loan topics, frequently asked questions, 
and even videos walking you through our website. If you are enrolled in the Essential Membership, you'll be able to reach out to our support team and get one-on-one -on -one help with your situation. We have a few different ways you can contact us. You can email us, send us a message. Uh, we even have a new live chat feature. Uh, lots of different ways to reach us. So if you need any assistance uh, and there's anything we can do to help, click contact support uh, to get in contact with us. All righty. As we start to wrap up, I'll leave you with some next steps. Again, be sure that you have access to your Savvy accounts, either by signing up or checking your email after the session. We encourage you to enroll in Essential to make the most of this benefit and access great features like one-on-one -on -one help. Be sure to complete your applications to see what options you have and see if there's any ways that you could save on your student loans. So that's everything I've got. Uh, we can now open it up for questions. I see there are uh, about 30 questions in the Q&A so far. So let's take a look and see which of these we can get uh, answers to. Can you tell us how consolidating helps under PSLF? For sure. So in order to enroll in PSLF, you have to have direct federal loans. If you have non-direct loans like FEL loans or Parent PLUS loans, you are required to consolidate in order to enroll. So the biggest benefit of consolidating is that it makes you eligible for this program. If you already have all direct loans, you don't need to consolidate, and you are eligible to enroll just as you are right now. Someone says, I have applied for a PSLF before, but it said my loan type didn't qualify. However, I got a notification from Savvy that it does. Could you help? For sure. I would really recommend reaching out to our support team uh, because we will want to take a look at your situation and figure out what that discrepancy is. Uh, we can check and make sure that your servicer is processing it correctly. Uh, and if they aren't, we can help resolve that so that we can help you to successfully enroll in PSLF. Uh, so if your servicer is telling you one thing and Savvy is telling you something else, I'd really recommend talking to our support team so we can take a closer look. Uh, we, we wish it didn't happen, but sometimes, you know, servicers do make mistakes and could incorrectly deny you. Uh, maybe they don't process your application, lots of different things. So we encourage you to uh, utilize our services. We're here to help, and we want to ensure that you are getting every option that you qualify for. Uh, a couple of people are saying, I thought the adjustment was supposed to be done already, um, and how do I know once it's happened? So it, it was previously the deadline of April 30th, and the Department of Ed said they would do the adjustment in July. Uh, they extended the deadline to give people more time. Uh, so now the deadline was extended and they've extended how long it will take to do the adjustments. They are already happening and they will continue to happen throughout uh, the fall of 2024. Once the adjustments are done, uh, they have said that there will be sort of a, a dashboard or way to see the updates on studentaid.gov. So they haven't fully unveiled the process yet, but they have said that once the adjustments are complete, you'll be able to see what periods you got credit for on your student aid accounts. Is there a difference in what type of loan is partially forgiven versus complete forgiveness? So that could depend um, mostly on which forgiveness plan you are pursuing. There are some programs that only provide partial forgiveness. There are some that provide total forgiveness. For example, uh, PSLF and income-driven forgiveness, those both provide full forgiveness of your entire remaining balance. There are other programs out there like teacher loan forgiveness, which, which provide a set amount of forgiveness, like $5,000. Uh, so depending on which plan you are pursuing, uh, that could impact whether you're going to get partial or full loan forgiveness. In your Savvy account, you'll be able to see an estimate of how much forgiveness you can get 
so that you know whether you're getting the whole thing forgiven or if you're still going to have a balance. I already consolidated with Mohila. Do I have to do another one? You don't. If you've already consolidated into direct loans, uh, you are good to go in your current form. Why am I being transferred from Mohila to Ed Financial? So from time to time, servicers do transfer you to another servicer. Uh, Mohila specifically right now is undergoing a lot of system upgrades. Uh, and in response to this, they are transferring some borrowers over to other servicers. If you are being transferred, don't panic. Uh, this is perfectly okay. It's very routine. Uh, and your new servicer will get you set up with your new account. And you'll be good to go moving forward. Will we have access to the slides? Yes, we are recording this. We will post it on our YouTube and we will share the link uh, and details with you in an email after the session. Is spouse income taken into consideration? That depends on your uh, tax filing status. If you are married, filing jointly, your spouse's income is used when calculating your payment. If you're married filing separately, they use just your income. Someone says, I consolidated my loans to make them direct, and now I'm on the safe plan. I didn't consolidate all of my loans, though, because some were already direct. Is there a benefit if I reconsolidate into one? So really, if you have all direct loans, you're good to go as is. You'd really only need to consolidate again uh, if your loans have different payment counts. Uh, so if you took your loans out at different times, consolidating could make them all eligible for forgiveness at once. If you're not sure, uh, you can reach out to our support team. We can take a closer look at your account, uh, see what your payment counts are on each loan are and recommend whether you are good as is or it's better to consolidate again. Do I need to apply for SAVE if I'm already on an income-driven plan? So income-driven is a category of repayment plan. SAVE is one of the plans in the income-driven category. It's possible that you're already on save or you're in one of the other three plans. I would encourage you to start a savvy application because we can see whether you are already on save uh, or if you could benefit by switching to it. Is the save plan for only existing loans? I'm considering taking a loan for the fall semester. Any direct loans, including future loans, uh, will be eligible for save. So if you're thinking about going back to school and you're considering what repayment options you'll have, a SAVE will be an option for you. When you take out a new loan, uh, it will be in something called an in-school deferment. The entire time you were in school, you will not have to make payments on that loans. Then once you graduate or leave school, that loan will enter repayment. Once it enters repayment, you can then enroll it into SAVE to get that payment, which is based on your income. If my payments have been $0, does that count towards forgiveness? Yes. Any months with a $0 payment count towards forgiveness for PSLF and income driven. Will auto pay payments still be processed during the PSLF pause? Yes, they will. A couple of people are asking um, if they can talk to someone uh, about their situation or if there's someone they can speak to to get some help. Uh, you can reach out to our support team by clicking the contact support button. There are a few different ways to get in contact with us. So click contact support uh, and then reach out to us using your preferred method. And we are happy to work with you and resolve any issues you have or answer any questions that you have. I have the essential membership. How do I get that one-on-one -on -one help? Uh, same thing, just click contact support, reach out to us, 
that is always the fastest way to get in contact with us uh, because reaching out through your savvy account uh, flags for us that you are an essential member uh, and lets us reply to you as fast as we can. Am I able to enroll with Savvy if I do not work for a membership organization? Uh, I filled out info before, but I never heard back. So Savvy is not yet available to the general public, uh, but we do have a waiting list, uh, and we do periodically open that up uh, to uh, allow more people to use our services. Uh, so if you have signed up, uh, and by being on this webinar, uh, we can get you an account mate. Uh, so after this session, we'll send out an email with instructions on how you can activate uh, and create your account. Uh, so even if you're not uh, affiliated with one of our partners, by attending this webinar, you can get access to Savvy. Uh, so check your email after the session for instructions on how to sign up. Where will the recording be? It will be posted on our YouTube channel. Um, I'll send that link for you all in the chat uh, since a couple people are asking for it. Uh, and we're also gonna send out that link tomorrow in the, in the follow-up email. I made my 120th payment. Is there anything else I should do? You should submit an employment certification form to get your employment up to date. Once the uh, processing pause ends, they will process that form, see that you're at the 120 and process you for forgiveness. My loans are already consolidated and I don't have a payment until 2025. Uh, my loans are undergrad. Um, so if you have already consolidated and you don't have a payment yet, uh, it could be because either you're on an income driven plan with a $0 payment uh, or uh, you are in like an in-school deferment and your loans haven't entered for payment yet. Uh, we can still take a look at your situation, get you set up with whatever your best option is, and help you once you are making payments. I already paid off my, my loans. Is there a way I can get forgiveness? So if you have paid off your loan, unfortunately, you would not qualify for any loan forgiveness. These programs work uh, by forgiving the remaining balance after you've met the requirements. So if you paid off your balance before meeting all the requirements, you would not have any forgiveness uh, available. My son worked in public service for a year. Should he apply for PSLF even though it was only a year? For sure. Uh, so even though it was only for a year, he could apply and get credit for that one year. If he were to ever return to public service, he would pick up at that one year mark and only would have about nine years left until he qualified for forgiveness. It never hurts. Uh, there's really no downside to getting credit for that time, uh, and it could only benefit you in the future. How are we notified when our loan is forgiven? You'll receive a notice from uh, your servicer and from the Department of Ed notifying you that your loan was forgiven. It's sent by your preferred method of communication. So if you have opted in for emails, they will email you. Uh, if you usually get uh, physical mail, they'll send it that way. And uh, your balances will be updated to zero. So you will no longer see a loan balance on your online account. How do I apply for the one-time account adjustment? It will be automatic for anyone who has the right type of loans. As long as you have loans managed by the Department of Education, you'll be automatically included. If you have FELL loans, uh, Perkins loans, Parent Plus loans, any of those, you should consolidate before June 30th and you'll be automatically included.
Is someone with an unsubsidized loan required to consolidate? Uh, so you are only required to consolidate if you have a FEL loan or a parent plus loan. There are things called subsidized or unsubsidized loans, and that just determines how your interest is calculated. There can be a direct subsidized, a direct unsubsidized. There's also FEL you know, subsidized. So the important part is not whether your loan is subsidized or unsubsidized. It's whether it is a direct loan. So check out your loan, see if it's direct. If it's not, you'll want to consolidate it. Does my past employer have to fill out a form before I apply for forgiveness? Uh, so part of the forgiveness process is having a form signed by your employer. The way it works is you and your employer sign a form to prove that you worked in public service. You'll turn in that form and you'll get credit for any payments you made while working there. Savvy helps you with that process. So we help you create that form. We get it signed by your uh, employers and then we submit that for you. What is the cost of Savvy? So we have a few different options. Remember, it's free to make your account and we can even provide you with instructions on how you can apply for free. We do have a premium plan called our essential membership, uh, which typically is no more than $70 per year. But many of our uh, partners offer discounts on that, uh, which lower the cost below $70. We encourage you to click select a plan from your Savvy dashboard so that you can see what the cost is for you and enroll if you would like to. There are a lot of benefits to enrolling because uh, it unlocks features like letting us create and submit applications, uh, giving you access to support, uh, things like that. If you already have an account, you can scan the QR code on the screen, sign in, and it will show you exactly what the cost is for you. If you would like to enroll for the first time and you already have an account, you can scan this QR code to sign up as well. Uh, you'll be able to sign into your account, uh, select the plan that's best for you and enroll. And once you are enrolled and have that active essential membership, your account will be able to do things like reach out to support, send us a message, talk to us, things like that. Do Parent PLUS loans qualify for forgiveness? Yes, uh, Parent PLUS loans are eligible for forgiveness. Uh, in order to make them eligible, you need to consolidate them into a direct consolidation loan. Once you've done that, you can enroll them into an income-driven plan or pursue PSLF. I've been approved for SAVE. Am I correct that no interest will accumulate even though my payments are lower than the monthly interest? So there is a little bit of confusion about this. Uh, because it's a bit of a complicated situation. Enrolling in SAVE does not change your interest rate. It does not change any past interest that is accumulated either. It only helps moving forward. Interest is still going to accumulate. Uh, so let's say you accumulate you know, uh, $100 of interest per month and your payment is only $50. You'll pay your $50 payment and the remaining $50 of interest is paid by the Department of Ed. So you'll still see you know, some interest accumulate each month. However, the remaining amount will be paid by the Department of Ed and won't be added onto your total balance. Is income repayment the same as save? So income-driven repayment is a category of repayment plan. Within that category, there are four plans available. One of those is the SAVE plan. So if you are on the SAVE plan, you are considered as being on an income-driven plan. I paid off my loan in late 2023. Can I get a refund? Unfortunately, you cannot. Uh, if you have paid off your loan before you qualify for forgiveness, that loan is, is simply paid off and you're not a candidate to receive loan forgiveness.
My servicer was Mohila, but now it's Advantage. Why was I changed again? From time to time, uh, servicers do transfer borrowers uh, from one to another. Uh, as of right now, Mohila is doing some system upgrades. Uh, and as a result of that, some borrowers are being transferred to new servicers. So right now we are seeing some Mohila borrowers moved over to either Ed Financial, Advantage, things like that. It's perfectly okay if you are moved. Uh, it, it can be kind of a headache having to access a new account, uh, but there's really no downsides to it. You'll still keep credit for your payments. You'll still have the same monthly payment, uh, all of that. Is my husband expected to help me with student loans, uh, even if he has no loans? So based on the rules of the Department of Education, if you are enrolling in an income-driven plan and you file your taxes jointly, your spouse's income is included when calculating the payment. This is because when you file jointly, you and your spouse's income are merged into one adjusted gross income number. If you file separately, they will only use your income since you and your spouses have separate AGIs. Uh, the loans will still be in your name. Your spouse will not be responsible for repaying them. Uh, they won't be put in your spouse's name. It's just that because the income numbers are merged, uh, that means that some of their income will be calculated uh, with your payment. Some of my loans were forgiven under PSLF. I had remaining loans that are now at the 120. Can those be forgiven now too? Yes. So if you have loans with different payment counts, they qualify for forgiveness at different points. Uh, it, if you reach 120 on your remaining loans, those can be forgiven now too. Is it possible to switch your loan servicer, for example, from Ed Financial to uh, another servicer? So uh, I'm not familiar uh, with a way to simply just request a change. However, when you are going through the consolidation process, uh, you are able to choose what you want your servicer to be. Uh, I think that is the only way I know of to manually request a servicer change. Uh, but I do want to say if you're wanting to change because you are experiencing issues with your servicer, please let us know about that because we want to help you resolve those issues. Um, if you're uh, with Ed Financial and you are maybe experiencing some issues, you applied and you're not getting anywhere, let us know. We are happy to work with you and them to try and get those issues resolved as soon as possible to make this process easier for you. Can Parent PLUS loans that I took out for my child be consolidated with my loans? Yes. So Parent PLUS loans are in the parent's name. If the parent has other loans of their own, they can definitely consolidate them and combine them into, into just one. What if I'm approved for PSLF before my son finishes school, though? Uh, if that's the case, your loans would be forgiven, and then your Parent PLUS loans would not be eligible for forgiveness until they've made 120 payments as well. How do I know if I'm enrolled in PSLF? 
So once you are enrolled, you'll receive a notification uh, and you'll get a, a letter detailing your payment count with how many payments you have and still need to make to reach 120. If you're not sure if you're enrolled, I'd recommend starting your savvy application. We can kind of take a look at what's happened, uh, what hasn't happened, and make sure that you are enrolled and on track. Alrighty, um, I know there are more questions. There, there are still over 20 questions uh, in the Q&A, but we've got just about one minute left, so I don't think I'm going to be able to get to all of them today. If you have a question I was not able to answer, I would really encourage you to access your Savvy account and reach out to our support team. They are always more than happy to help however they can. Uh, they are so knowledgeable about all things student loans. They know even more than I do, uh, and I know they will take great care of you. So if there's anything we can do to help, if you have a question you still need an answer to, please don't hesitate to reach out to us and we will be more than happy to help. With that, as we wrap up, uh, again, I just wanna say thank you so much for attending. I really do appreciate your time and I hope that you all have found this session useful. Be sure to watch for that follow-up email tomorrow, which will include steps to get started and a link to the YouTube channel for this recording. So thanks again and have a great afternoon.